I've been interested in this for a long time. Certainly uh, in my role as an environmental lawyer, it was a real eye-opener. Um, uh, it doesn't take you a long time to work out the laws around uh, genetically modified organisms. Uh, there aren't any, or aren't many, and those that are aren't certainly directed towards consumers' right to know, and they're certainly not directed towards giving farmers genuine choice uh, in how they perform uh, their agriculture. Uh, the Greens party room doesn't spend a whole lot of time debating uh, this issue. We're against it, we have been for a long time and we're not about to change. We don't want to see these organisms released into the environment, we don't want them in our food chain. The take home message from what I say is two words you've all heard before, eternal vigilance. We actually have an open ended moratorium but we have a, a principle in our legal system which says that if you don't um, do something with a regulation after 10 years it uh, basically expires. But of course anyone could come along at any stage any government and could change the situation. I remember back in 2007, uh, Nick Xenophon, Sandra Kank and myself, we had a three-pronged approach. Uh, we decided there were three legal things needed done uh, in South Australia and we took one of them each. Uh, Sandra Kank from the Democrats, she took the moratorium uh, and, and put a bill forward to keep the moratorium going. Uh, Nick uh, brought forward some uh, truth in labelling, you know, some, some labelling laws so that people knew what they were eating. And I took on the role of uh, farmer protection, innocent farmer protection, those whose uh, l properties are contaminated against their will uh, by a product that they didn't want, they had no part of, they didn't put it onto their land. There are three ways that you can look after this problem of contamination of land resulting from GM material coming from somewhere else. One is to pit farmer against farmer. Now that's a situation that Mr Marsh has found himself in Western Australia. He has to find who it was whose GM material escaped and got onto his land and he has to take that farmer to court. Let's sheet the responsib responsibility home to the owners of the technology. Let's make Bay and Monsanto, make them responsible. And if someone ends up with GM crop on their land and they lose out as a result, then the buck stops with Monsanto. They're the ones that you sue. I think that's why not make the proprietors of, of this technology um, pay a certain proportion, uh, a certain amount of money, you know, per seed, per tonne, whatever, into a fund, so there is a ready-made fund uh, to which people can claim against um, if they've suffered loss as a, as a result of contaminated material, con you know, getting onto their land and losing, as Mr Marsh did, his organic certification. You know, losing money. Easy to add up how much money he will lose. Easy to work it out, but you take it from a fund that the GM companies have contributed to. Really it comes down to making the pushes of unsafe or unhealthy products have to stand behind uh, their products with their wallets. So whilst we do have the moratorium in place, eternal vigilance is important and it's good that we've got a cross-party um, range of members who are supporting it and I agree with the analysis that's been made already. The longer we hang on to GM status, the, uh, the, the more likely it is that it's with us for the long run, uh, for the long haul, because we'll see that the other states regret the path they went down and we'll feel pretty cock-a-hoop about ourselves that we've actually made a smart choice.